Okay. I just want to make this video really quickly um, as part of my documentation. Um, uh, basically, um, it's just an update on my circumstances and anything else. Uh, uh, was it last week? Um, yes, I think it was last week. Um, I have to be kind of careful what I'm saying because I've got to be get the balance between being brutally honest and oh, uh, I'll just say it. <laughs> After all, every day that I'm still alive is a miracle because. Obviously, I've just been left traumatised, you know. I, I, those police thugs that beat me found it funny that I have nightmares. That I've been left traumatised and I'm so PC Franklin Scott, PC Scott Franklin Lester Senior, who was nominated by his mates to get an award medals for helping the vulnerable people when he's had 12 complaints against him I don't even have the energy to complain he arrested me three hours after I recorded a criminal on a tag threatening to beat me senseless and he's left a three-year-old traumatized but there we go when you're in the club um, I talked about it in my last video, the manager of Poundland, his three-year-old daughter, whose who's wife or partner and daughter have been left traumatised. You know, a three-year-old. Crumbs, if I'm traumatised, can you imagine what a three-year-old is going through? But anyway... Um, I was, me and my partner went to Matthew 25 to get some food because I want people out there to know that it doesn't matter whether you are on benefits or receiving loads of benefits, you can still be forced into poverty. It doesn't matter. I owe my partner and his father money because I would not have made it to these places. I've had to pay, keep buying new clean clothes um, and I've got stuff with several different people including my partner's friend who's a lawyer, my partner's friend who works at the food bank and they have abused me despite being Christians despite saying I'll pray for you I made gifts for them and the abuse and the threat of disposal of my things and things like that and I've had to get adult social care involved this is why I'm going to let his my partner's Christian friend an ex-Sikh turned evangelist who's got quite a mouth on her because uh, she's she knows Eben so um, yeah I've been I've been mistreated by people all my life but <sighs> this gets this takes it to a whole new level um, but yeah with all the things that have happened wow you know, just because I've had, I've used thousands of pounds of back pip on hotels just for my safety last year, which I keep, keep, I keep repeating myself in case someone doesn't know. Now, I don't, still don't know how my father died. I'm worried about my gold ring and I'm worried about possessions of mine that were in Eben's flat, including gifts that I made for her and for Juliet, who was a crucial witness to crimes which are still live because they haven't been looked into. So, Juliet, if you're watching this, because I've been on the phone and I'm having appointments at St Mary's house. So, regardless of whether we're friends or not, 
and I do pray that you are that you're getting better your cancer treatment is You know, when you've put your trust in someone and you already find it hard because so many people have abused you and then you take that person's trust and you make them think that you're a friend or whatever you are, it doesn't matter. But it just so happens that you you have worked for St Mary's House as a, and you're a witness for the local MP, Caroline Ansell, and you're also a witness for the local government and social care ombudsman. And I still haven't added to the 100% of bad reviews on Trust a Pilot for the GMC. I did for Sussex Partnership and I did for the Local Government and Social Care Ombudsman. But seriously, there's I'm writing the timing has to be right because obviously I've been heavily targeted for whatever reason with this YouTube and the police abusing powers. Whatever, I'm not. I'm. Not, uh, it doesn't matter anymore because I'm in a very safe place spiritually, and Abby Yahoo is protecting me and my partner um, with our hedge of protection and our avaha, which is Hebrew for love, a oneness with Yahweh and a young a oneness between a man and a woman, avaha. And it's what so many people are craving. So many people, especially people with DID, transgender people, my sisters, my sisters, they'll be craving it. So many people out there are craving Avaha. Anyway, so uh, we were down at Matthew 25, me and my partner last week, and... Um, This is Eastbourne for you. I've got to be careful how I say it. There's a funny woman there. She's not from the UK. She's from another European country. I've been to that country and I'm not going to say which country it is because then, then it might put her in a vulnerable position, but she was very rude to me when back in April when I was staying at one of the best western hotels she was just there was something not right with her but there's no excuse it's her own fault that she made herself homeless because the hotel had taken her in given her a job given her something to do I came down in the to speak to the South African manager, got to get some ice. She had a go at me. She said I should get a job. She said, she said, um, you're not, she told me off as if I was a child. You're not to come down here after a certain time. So I disagree with the South African manager because he criticised me. And he's a Christian. I've been to South Africa. My grand, I met my biological grandparents in South Africa. But, yeah, this woman made herself homeless because I, I, there's a way to speak to members of the public. And she was back on the streets because I made a complaint. And this was around the same time that I was trying to get the legal help, the legal aid, which I'm now getting, and Councillor Josh Babarundi, who knows about my YouTube videos, but won't tell me how. Oh, by the way, it's funny, isn't it? You would have thought these, if I'm such a problem, or if I'm being so pathetic, or if I'm, if, if, if nothing I said was of any significance, why would they be so bothered about a YouTube channel that I never even told them about? You would have thought they'd have more important things to do but they ignored my CFO notice under common law they ignored council Josh Beber and the OBE ignored my um, online application form my messages to him on Facebook 
yet he knew about my YouTube channel when I was self-funding that hotel for nine months for my safety. So, yeah. So, anyway, we, me and my partner last week, we were in the queue for Matthew 25 to get some food. I've had to give him £100. I've He had to pay £30 for me to get in a taxi back here. You know, it all, but I don't have a bus pass. I'm getting from here to Eastbourne and back and whatnot. And it all tops up. I mean, three days after I'd been paid, I had to buy food, uh, some extra clothes and bits and bobs. And because I'd given him money, it's amazing that I have got nothing to show for it. And it put, so, you know, we were, we can be forced into poverty, even if you're on um, well-paying benefits, because this has gone on for seven years, seven years of torture, me being arrested, me being left to sleep rough. There are so many damages. And there's something I want to say about, I'll just write it on my hand. I know you shouldn't write on your hand. The government um, petition, because there's something I want to say about that, because I want to warn, I want to warn people about the English language and common law. Um, so I've just written that on my hand because I want to say that. Um, but yeah, no, these charity workers, they work, the ones who are giving out food to us, they're very generous, they don't deserve the abuse, but the woman, the Eastern European woman who was funny to me in that hotel, who's now homeless, she was being warned by one of the charity workers, I've warned you not to bring you're not to come here with that person, do 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 You know, you can't help but over here. Anyway, she ended up, the charity worker for warming up the homeless, uh, sorry, Matthew, 25, she had to call the police because she was um, threatened again by this man who had apparently threatened to stab them. And they'd also had problems where people were taking drugs in the beautiful garden at Matthew 25 and they had some illegal immigrants sleeping round the back of the church or something. (sighs) You, You just, I don't feel safe during the daytime. That's how bad it is. Um... And this is what they, this is what this corrupt council, Eastbourne Borough Council, want to cover up because it's the holiday sun trap of the south. They want to sell it to the elderly. This country is an absolute cesspit. Anyway, I've got more to say. These illegal immigrants that, the dangerous, these criminals that are coming over here and, you know, you, you hear about it, that, 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 Schoolgirls are being taught self defense. <laughs> Schoolgirls in the UK have been taught self defense to defend themselves from being raped by the illegal immigrants. And then you've got the, the babies in France that were stabbed in the push chairs. It's like, what's going on, you know? And these politicians are saying, bring it, these criminal po- politicians are saying, bring in more, bring in more, bring in more. It's all been designed to create chaos. And all the while, your UK police force, in, do you know, I'll say it a million times over again and again and again, I'll keep saying it. My late mother had an amazing life at sea in the 50s and 60s. She met famous people she worked for woman's magazine she had an amazing life she didn't want to come back here because of the you know i'm actually glad my mother is not here to, to because i don't feel safe and i heard about a woman on msn saying her grandmother was mugged in her own home and pushed down the stairs and all the police did was say why didn't you get cctv i'm technophobe so how would my 85 year old mother know how to do that so yeah i'm glad my mother's not here actually we're living in the end times
it's okay. And me and my partner are going home. And when I see and I just think, there's a little baby there. Tiny baby. What are they being born into? And what with Jeanette Archer's, you know, the SRA conference. I, I knew when I was a child that I was the world was going to be a more evil place. But there's nothing new under the sun. This has all been orchestrated. Um, yeah, that was quite frightening to hear. Um, and yet not surprising. Uh, my partner said to me today that there are more families living in hotels in the UK. This has all been gradual. How brainwashed have you got to be to go to a food bank when you're working your butt off? If you you come from a working family and you're going to a food bank in one of the richest countries in the world, you're going to a food bank to feed your family when you're already working hard and your children are in poverty and you, the British public, accept this. You tolerate the police brutality. I'm in recovery from the trauma. I'm praying every minute of every day. It's a spiritual and psychological warfare, but it's spiritual. And Abba Yahweh has got a hedge of protection around me and my partner and to those that I love. Abba Yahweh El Shaddai. I'm covered by the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. And every day, I know why we're here. I know why we're here. I know why I suffer through it. I know why. Because it's worth it. To have eternity. To have eternity in paradise. Confess your sins to Yeshua HaMashiach. Confess that you are a sinner. Give your life to him. Yeah. He suffered and died in the flesh as a man. Beyond words. So that you might, might have eternal life. And many of you will say in those last days, Lord, Lord, did I not do this? Did I not do that? And he'll say, depart from me for I never knew you. There'll be many, many Christians who won't, they, they have no idea. I am, I know I've always been protected, so I'm not going to be afraid. I might be traumatised, but I'm not going to be afraid. So anyway, yeah, all these hotels that are full of families, um, UK families, hotels, they're not even... <laughs> they've been shoving them in. Anyway, but I've had... Um, I can't look at the emails from the solicitor who's dealing with my... Because I don't know how my father died. But the paralegal who knows because obviously they pass information. They've passed... Adult social care have passed information to the paralegal who's to find out what's suitable accommodation. But this is just it. There's so many horrors stories so many they put me through so much insanity over I mean I've had more torture than I've ever had in my entire life than when my partner came along and before that I was struggling though but as soon as he came into this this is where the council and even the law firm I'm angry with them because the council abused me by using his flat they took my home from me. They dragged me out of my home. One of these supported accommodations that's notorious 
that ignored an online petition seven, eight years ago, no, nine years ago, 2015, eight years ago, just before I was there, saying stop bullying the vulnerable and the disabled and nothing had changed and they dragged me out of there. And I was I gave them a second chance and I've done care work. And I've never known anything like it, but I've never had so much torture in all my life over seven years. I said I can't even count the number of times I've been arrested. I was meant to get support with my mother's rare cancer in supported accommodation. I was meant to get support with my mental health. I've only come to find out later in life that I've a vic- I'm a victim of trauma that happened before the age of four and you know it's like my sister's sex change this is where all the messing around and the social engineering comes in and the discrimination because I don't drink I don't take drugs and all this nonsense I have a a normal I have a mental breakdown like a normal human being who suffered trauma and this is what they do to you seriously these demented psychopaths who've they don't even realise, they can't see for themselves. And um, just think how awful it must be to, to be these people. I'm free. I am free from all of that. They've traumatised me. Yes, I'm permanently traumatised, but I'm free. I, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yeshua, a Mashiach. So, um, yeah, have you seen and, and a couple of online articles uh, in relation to everything I've just been talking about? Germany cannot take any more illegal immigrants because they've got all these special places that they're putting them in. They can't take any more. This has all been set up. And then there was another article saying that there's a um, corrupt law firm that's been paid ten thousand pounds per applicant. That's told, and they're told how to lie by these corrupt lawyers. They're told how to lie so that they can stay in the UK illegally. They're faking asylum claims. All these corrupt law firms. It's like. The executor of my late mother's estate got angry with me years ago because she said, Bryony, you've got to know how to play the system. And I said, I said, I, w- I, I said, I wouldn't know how to play this. Si- I wouldn't play the system if I knew how to. And she said, oh, I didn't mean it like that. I don't mean like, I said, I know what you mean. But, you know, my partner was told, <sighs> My partner's not been well, but he was told by the food bank, he was told by Ray Alloway, you've got to answer the questions on these forms a certain way. They've deliberately made the PIP thing a trap. That's why there are people with terminal illnesses being turned away. There are people who've taken their own lives because of this corrupt government. Now this is what I this now brings me to the most important thing that I have to say because you need to understand common law and how it works. There has been a recent petition that has come out and this petition is basically saying I've seen it on Facebook there's an ex-footballer who used to be on Question of Sport, uh, some celebrity who's advertising this with other people. And it's about, I um, I withdraw my... I withdraw my consent for the government, this corrupt government to govern me, etc., etc. Now, I clicked on it and I very nearly signed it until a woman in the comments said, or someone's, or someone else said it. Someone else said it. For, before this woman commented, they, they said, 
you've got to be careful with the English language because under common law, if you sign this petition, you're basically saying, I no longer consent, which means that you previously consented to this government governing you. So they, you've got to be careful because with English language, with common law, unlike corporate law, unlike corporate law, common law tells it how it is. So if you say I'm, I'm, I'm withdrawing my consent, that in itself is saying that you previously consented. I never consented for this corrupt government. I never consented for this corrupt government to govern me. So that's why I won't sign the petition. And that's why, as another woman's commented at that point, she said, thank you for clearing that up for me because I very, it's it's so confused. You just don't know what to do anymore. You know, like there are all these pitfalls. So this is where you've got to be very careful. <sighs> I mean, it might work. The petition might pass work for say for someone who ha who has previously consented I've never voted before so I suppose if I had voted then it might work but I've never consented for this corrupt government to, to govern me so there we go anyway so there we go um just thought I'd say that and uh, we just I just see where this uh, goes with adult social care because um, um, well um, you know I, I I can't I've lost so much confidence because of everything that's happened um. And, you know, my partner's friends have abused me and, you know, this is what happens though. But everything's difficult. Everything's difficult. I can't deal with, I mean, everything happens for a reason. A prayer, what happened earlier today before I got on the bus to go to Eastbourne with my partner because my partner came over here and I went back to Eastbourne with him. As I was getting waiting for the bus, because it was very strange that we missed buses down at Denton Corner, Denton Roundabout thingy, and I was like, I've just realised I've given it away where I am. Never mind. Never mind. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> Um, anyway, where we stood at the bus stop, there weren't any buses going back to Eastbourne. So we went back to another place nearer to here, where I used to get on the school bus when I was at primary school. And getting off the bus... Uh, where um, I, I whispered to my partner, I said, it's my Portuguese godparents. <sighs> and I thought I wanted to hide because it was awkward. <sighs> um, because bearing in mind my godmother, when I, she had no idea that I'd been attacked at Belmore Road. She has absolutely no idea what's happened to me. Absolutely no idea, but she rang me out, out, up out of the blue to say that there was a big deadly killer out there, you know. You know, that um, operation to kill off the masses. So she was obviously scared about that. So she's been in her own dark place in here. I, I couldn't care less what... I wasn't interested in what was going on with this whole 
convid thing. And um, I was just terrified. I just needed to be in a safe bloody place. She had no idea that I'd been attacked several times. She has still has no idea that one of my assailants in that accommodation was mentioned in the national news as mugging the elder, elderly twice with 22 previous convictions. And she just said, you know, life is a bitch. She, she's in the next road from here. She doesn't realise that I am in the this road below her. She's literally round the corner. But when... Because I don't know whether my late mother's friend is... My late mother's best friend from Kent. I don't know if she's okay or not. I just don't know anything. She's in her late 80s. But I saw my godmother get off the bus with a walking stick and I said... I had my had Darren with me and there's a lot of hurt there's been a lot of hurt let's just say that um and put downs and you know and well my mother died and I've got my own grandchildren but there were you know there were hugs exchanged between us so but my partner later said he said to me afterwards he said well there's a reason why that those buses were delayed. I said, yeah, that happened for a reason. Uh, you know, praise ya, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, but it, it, it was, it's awkward. It's awkward. It's the same with his mother, my partner's mother and his, his parents. It's the same sort of thing because they don't understand. They were walking around with mouth masks my partner and I are living in a place of extreme revelations and truth and we know what's going on and we're seeing and living it. You, you know, me and my partner were are extremely, we've both had very, very middle class upbringings. My partner was born in Surrey, like my mother, my mother had a privileged upbringing during the war. I have working class blood, I have early childhood trauma and I have been discriminated against and people don't like it when you tell the truth. So, but this is a very interesting place to be and I can tell you that much. And um, see where this goes. So, uh, and on that note, I will say Shalom Shabbat. Uh, It's not Shabbat, what am I saying? Shalom Yahweh. And um, blessings to those who call on the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen.